We're going to make a set of jumper cables today. Hey guys, thanks for joining me again here in my shop. Uh, I'm going to try to make a set of jumper cables. The ones that I have here are, well, I think I stole them from my dad, and they're probably 40 years old. <laughs> they don't work too well. The springs are worn out, they're made out of steel, they're not even really good conductors, and the cables are cracking and, and shot. And, and for what they are, they, they, they worked okay, um, and they were probably they were, they were probably actually made in the USA. That's how old they are. So um, I'm going to try to make a new set of cables, uh, one that's going to work out better. Uh, it's going to they're going to last longer, and they're going to be able to carry more, more more current. So stick with me, and I'll show you how I did it. And um, I appreciate you watching. Okay, so you're going to start out with purchasing. This is welding cable or battery cable. Um, it's actually printed on the the cable itself that it's um, welding cable. See if I can get it to focus here. Anyway, it's two gauge and um, so you're going to start out with that. Get you some high quality clamps. Got some copper fittings. I want to go ahead and strip back about three quarters of an inch, half an inch. As you can tell, the strands are very thin. And that's what makes it that's what makes it flexible. Take the fitting out of there. As you can see it's a it's a copper fitting, solid copper. What I want to do is take some flux. Solder flux. This is, you could, you could use the kind that's for um, you know doing plumbing. This is for this is for plumbing because it's going to take a lot. So you want to spread it on the fitting, and you also want to put it on the end of the cable. You want to make sure that there is very low resistance between the fitting and the cable and to ensure that once we get it crimped down and make our mechanical connection we're going to make a better electrical connection by heating it up and putting some solder in there. I want to have the back piece on the insulation and the, and the, and the front two tabs I want those to be on the on the actual conductor itself so you, you want the uh, the rubberized sheath to take some of the strain and you'll see we're going to do some heat shrink as well that has some glue in it. Spin one side over. Bring the other side over the top of that. You know, they make tools for this, but I don't have it, and the whole point of this project is low cost, low cost and better quality than you could get by buying some of those Walmart, cheap Walmart cables. If you ever, if you ever look at those cables, they, they, they don't ever actually give the gauge of cable. It just looks really thick, and then when you, when you get to the conductors, you see that it's it's very thin. 
Okay, so now that we've got this all mechanically mated here, <coughs> go ahead and use use that to prop it up. It's got some solder that you would use for, you know, electronics. It's a cheap Harbor Freight torch. You want to heat the, you don't want to heat the cable. You want to heat the uh, conductor or the, uh, the fitting. You can see when it starts to go, it's going to suck that solder in. It's drawing it in now. Let it go in there. Yep, you see it all, it took it all the way down to the sheath. Okay. Now you want to let it cool. It's really just too hot to handle right now. That heat will make its way all the way to the, you know, three, four inches up the, up the cable. So put a little water on it, cool it off. Yeah, I can feel the heat's worked its way all the way back about that far. I have some heat shrink that's that's got a, a, a glue inside which will help it bond it to the cable. So you want to kind of just set it at that distance there. Get your torch going again. You don't want to burn this. It'll catch on, you know, it won't catch on fire, but it, it'll, it'll melt like it's... You want to heat all the way around. Probably the better tool for this would be uh, like a heat gun. You can see that glue is going to start coming out of the back side of this. You want to be careful because if everything is hot and the glue sticks to your skin, it's going to burn for a long time. That, that shrink is going to shrink down on there nice and tight and it's going to add in the, in the strength of keeping this keeping this uh, connector on the end of this cable. I'm not crazy about the machines, or the, not the machine screw, but the, uh, I'm not crazy about the, um, the zip screw or sheet metal screw they used. At some point, you know, take that out and you can put a nut and a bolt in there. But that's it. And you just gotta do the other sides and you'll end up with a, a nice set of jumper cables for relatively cheap. Uh, probably a 20, 20 foot set of cables, I would guess, is with this gauge of wire is in the hundred and twenty dollar range and I paid twenty six dollars for this cable
I'm going to see if I can show you a little bit better view of this, how I do this. Take it, take your knife and go all the way down the, to the conductors and then roll it. Until you go all the way around. Then you just put one slit. It's going to want to come right off. There you go. Okay. The flux is what helps draw that solder. It actually, it etches the, uh, the copper. So it's like acidic. And it's what draws that solder into the joint. Otherwise it would just bubble up on the surface. Try to work that into the conductors. I like to try to get this up, sort of vertical. That way I don't catch my little carpet here on fire. Get a long piece of solder. Again, you want to heat the fitting, not the wire. I don't know if you can see that going down in there. It, it, it's it's sucking it in. I'm going to try to get this as even as possible so it shrinks evenly. This, this is really thick stuff here. Okay, that's good enough. You can see. That's probably never going to come out of there. The, you know, the, the screw will, will crap out before this pulls off. Okay, so everything is, all the, um, all the ends have been crimped on. These cables uh, are the, uh, the clamps. They didn't come with any instructions. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to, from what it looks like to me, it looks like, the cable is supposed to go underneath that as a, as another form of retention to take the strain off of the the flexing and this will end up getting weak and breaking off. So I'm going to try to get the cable underneath here and uh, see if it fits in there. It's going to take some. Yeah, it'll go.
okay, yeah, that's actually better than I expected it to be. The heat shrink is actually protecting the cable. So yeah, that's, that's perfect. We'll do that to all the other ones. This is going to be part of a little vehicle preparedness kit that I'm in the process of doing for both cars. And uh, a good pair of jumper, jumper cables is something that's kind of necessary for that. As you can see, everything fits in there nice. Okay, that'll go nice and tucked in the car and the toolbox in my truck. Um, so anyway, this is a, a quick half hour, 45 minute long project that you can do. Um, you know, it's one of those things where, yeah, you can go buy a set of jumper cables and that will certainly do. Um, but when you do these projects, again, I, I've mentioned this before, you, you build a skill level. And I think it's important to do a project like this that it's not a critical thing. So that later on, when you, you end up having to do something that's kind of a critical thing, you've got some foundation uh, skill set that, that you can use based on your experience of doing something like this that's going to help you uh, do the next project or want to take on the next project, not want to pay somebody to do what you need done. And um, I'm getting a better set of jumper cables with this configuration than if I would have went to the store. And I'm certain I can probably buy a, um, a nice set of jumper cables, but I, I, I'm pretty certain I'm going to pay a lot of money for it. And I, and I, I, I don't have $50 in this. So, anyway, uh, I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to leave them in the uh, comment section. And uh, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit the button. Um, it definitely uh, encourages me to, to want to do more videos when I get thumbs up and, and people subscribe. Also, um, I've, I've gotten some, some subscribers or YouTube watchers that have reached out to me privately. I certainly appreciate those emails and comments. Keep those coming. And uh, I'll catch you on the next video.